One of the talking points of the broadcast was Gervonta Tank Davis' low output, which as Tank mentioned in his post-fight interview, he was looking to trick Hector Garcia, since Garcia is a dangerous fighter. The thing is, Tank likes to watch and observe his opponents so that he could find the openings for attacks later in the fight. After the first three rounds of the fight, it became apparent Hector Garcia was looking for counters as he was setting a lot of traps trying to bait punches from Tank. This led to a seemingly uneventful few rounds that were more of a mental battle between the two. For example, Hector Garcia is going to set up this simple trap where he takes a step back which naturally is going to make Tank Davis take a step forward to eat up that real estate and keep the distance. So from there, Garcia simply shows the lead hand to occupy Tank as a stepping in and also to get him to respond with an attack that can be countered. And then we see just as designed, the lead hand is going to bait Gervonta Tank Davis into responding and Tank responds by changing levels and is about to launch an attack. However, we see Garcia is ready for the attack as you see he shifts his weight back defensively in preparation to counter Tank's attack. And Tank's attack is a signature technique of his that I like to call a misdirection 1-2 where he shoots the jab low and the straight left high. As you can see, Garcia counters this by catching the jab then splitting the straight left with his own straight left otherwise known as slipping to the outside of the punch while simultaneously throwing his straight. It's possible Garcia trained for this because like I said, this is a signature trick of Tank Davis's and the level change might have been Garcia's cue. Tank's misdirection 1-2 actually becomes one of Tank's keys to victory later in this fight, but only after some adjustments he makes first, which I'll break down. But first, the message from today's sponsor, Boxing Showtimes. If you're a boxing fan and never want to miss a fight, Boxing Showtimes is the only app you'll need. This app has a full boxing schedule that will show you where to buy tickets, keep you up to date with boxing news, give you reminders on upcoming fights, and so much more. My favorite feature of Boxing Showtimes is the interactive map that allows you to see what places are showing the fights closest to you. Use my link in the description to download for free, and once again thank you Boxing Showtimes. Realizing that Garcia is looking for counters by setting traps, Tank Davis begins to ramp up the pressure and come forward more to make the counter puncher uncomfortable. You see Garcia is probing with that lead hand, trying to get Davis to react in some way that he could counter. He even feints with the left hand, and still nothing from Davis for him to counter. The point is, as Tank gets more comfortable stepping into range, he begins to do so stepping with his rear foot first, then his lead foot, which is the opposite of what conventional boxing teaches you to do. Typically, you're taught to step forward with your lead foot first, but by breaking the rules with this advanced trick, stepping the rear foot first, it allows you to step your lead foot further while allowing you to keep your head and body back to be able to see a punch coming. Long story short, Tank steps his lead foot into punching range to put the pressure on Garcia. And so we see Garcia responds to the pressure by stepping back because he doesn't like it. And you see this pressure works because the distance between two fighters is determined by their lead foot. Garcia knew that Tank was in range because Tank simply stepped his lead foot into range. And so he got uncomfortable and stepped back giving up distance. And so the point of increasing the pressure is that eventually the counterpuncher Garcia will initiate first to stop the pressure. And this is what Tank wants because it provides Tank with counterpunching opportunities and it also can bait Garcia into exchanges which favor him. We see Garcia leads with a hook, but as I said since Tank stepped his lead foot into punching range while keeping his head and body back, he was able to see and avoid the hook. It pushes Tank back a little bit, but immediately his back in Garcia's face again, forcing another punch. Here's another instance where Tank steps his rear foot first, and Garcia checks him with his lead hand. On a side note, this is a good answer for when someone is stepping in rear foot first. Throw punches as they are stepping the rear foot, because it'll catch them in a narrow stance, where they won't be able to throw a meaningful counter. So this is good what Garcia is doing. I made a video explaining that Dimitri Bivol countered Canelo doing the same thing by timing his rear foot steps with punches.
except Garcia doesn't commit to a punch to stop the pressure. So again, you see Tank step with the rear foot first, and then again, Garcia shows the lead hand timing that step, but he doesn't really commit to a punch to stop Tank's pressure. Eventually, Garcia just gets too uncomfortable and just backs up to reset again. So once again, the pressure makes Garcia back up to reset, but this is what takes him to the ropes, which is where he doesn't want to be. And like I said, eventually the pressure will make Garcia initiate, and this gives Tank Davis counterpunching opportunities. As you see, he beautifully rolls Garcia's straight left hand and then counters with his own straight left hand. And then you see him have the defensive responsibility to pull from the counter. And so now with Tank successfully getting Garcia to initiate using pressure, then countering him, Garcia is going to become hesitant to initiate. But the thing is, Tank isn't stopping the pressure, and Garcia needs to punch to stop Tank's pressure. But every time he initiates, he gets countered. And so a vicious cycle has started, and eventually Garcia isn't going to initiate anymore when Tank walks in. Which now means Tank is going to have more opportunities to initiate his own attacks when he steps in. And the first one is his straight left over the low lead hand of Garcia. Now there's nothing wrong with holding the lead hand low. Tank is doing it here too as you can see. However, at some point you need to know when to pick the hand up to defend yourself from overhands at close range like this. You should also protect your chin by rolling straights with your shoulder. But Garcia didn't do that much in the fight, and it seems Tank picked up on it. And so at the beginning of the video I mentioned how Garcia was prepared for Tank Davis' misdirection 1-2. Well now we come full circle, where now that Tank has Garcia hesitant to throw, and is now tagging him with straight lefts, Tank can now mix his attack up even more and bring the misdirection hook low, straight high, back into play. And that's going to do it for this one. I thought Hector Garcia did pretty well up to that point. He was boxing well and counterpunching well, but Tank just proved to be too much for him once he put the pressure on. And with that, the fight between Tank Davis and the more famous Garcia, Ryan Garcia, should be next if what they've been saying is true and the fight is actually signed. I'm very much looking forward to that, and how do you guys think it'll go? Let me know in the comments, and also be sure to use my BetUS link in the description if you're looking to bet on that fight. It'll help out the channel. And as always, thank you to all my patrons, Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Albert Chen, Jeff, Dmitry Drozdov, Andre, Gustav Geza, Mark Price, Marshall Bott, Suaz Naber, and Jesus Galindo, as well as my channel member, Hot Pocket Maestro. You guys keep the channel going, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.